Hey, thanks for being here. Let's do some pod crashing. Episode number 195 is with Joe Piazza from the podcast, She Wants More. Hey, how are you doing? Joe, what a podcast. My God, you, you, are, you are really uncovering uh, you know, tight lip situations and, and, and a, a subject that so many people don't know about. They would like to talk about it, but who do you talk about it with? And you're providing that platform. Yeah, yeah. You talk about it with me. It's, it's who you talk about it with. Yeah. You talk about it in a massive podcast that is now you know, being downloaded by hundreds of thousands of people every single day. Uh, I have to say, I went into this podcast, She Wants More, with some judgment yeah. about infidelity. Right? I mean, I've been married now seven years, almost eight, I think. I don't know. I just had a third baby, so my brain no. is like not good with not good with the math. But I and I want my marriage to work. I want it to succeed. And part of what we're told a successful marriage is, is monogamy. Mm -hmm. So I went into this with some judgment and that I wanted to get rid of. And the women that I've talked to have been so open and honest. And so many of the women on the She Wants More podcast and each episode, we really focus on one woman and her story. And then we also dive into the history and the science and the sociology around affairs. Most of these women are telling me their story for the very first time. And there's something incredibly powerful about listening to someone tell you something so personal. You just feel like you're the, a fly on the wall listening to two good friends chat. What voice tone are you using? Because, I mean, in order to gain that trust, there has to be a certain sort of tone or you just know how to get there to get inside that journey. Well, you know, this isn't my first rodeo. Right. I, I had I had the committed podcast on the iHeart Network for five years. Right. And in committed, we interviewed a couple about just how their marriage worked. We talked to an astronaut about how his wife helped him get to outer space. We talked to couples who met in heroin addiction rehab. We talked to a couple that was blown up together in the Boston Marathon bombing. Mm. I'm used to talking to people about the most intimate aspects of their lives. And I also wrote the book, How to Be Married, in which I traveled around the world interviewing people about their relationships. So I think you become a good interviewer, and I hope that I am a good interviewer by interviewing. I, I, and I call I, you a conversationalist. You, you are so beyond just being an interviewer. Well, thank you. Thanks. I mean, and that's the thing. I just, I do want to just sit down and and have a conversation. And I'm also when we when we talk to people, I never want anyone to feel like we're tricking them or this is gotcha journalism. We tell people they can read their interviews. We tell people they can listen. We want everyone to feel comfortable. And if anyone ever doesn't, they can cancel it. It's okay. It's fine. And I think that that gives people a safe space to talk about things that they otherwise might not want to talk about. Well, one of the subjects that you talk about is with Monique, and uh, she always believed that her husband knew. I mean, for her to admit that, it's like, oh boy, here we go. We're, go we're diving in. Yeah, yeah. And I think in a lot of cases, a spouse does know and they don't want to confront it because right. one, of, one of the things that I discovered doing the She Wants More podcast is that... In a lot of ways, we idealize what a marriage is. We think a marriage has to be everything to us and it has to give us all of the things that we need. And, but in other ways, marriage is a long, long, long term business partnership. <laughs> you know, you are investing together, you own things together, you are raising children together. And that is not necessarily going to give you what you need emotionally or physically. And maybe that's okay. And so a lot of the women that I talked to said, I want, I don't want to leave my husband. Cause I think that that comes up a lot when I tell yeah. people that I did this podcast, they're like, well, just get divorced. <laughs> people don't want to get divorced. Divorce is a pain in the ass. It's yep. expensive. It's emotionally expensive. And a lot of people really, really like their partnership, mm -hmm. but they do want something else. And we've been told for a long time, you can't have anything else outside your marriage. You can only have this. Mm -hmm. Once you take your vows, you can't, get emotional support in a lot of cases you can't get emotional support from a man you can't get physical things from another person uh and i don't know i don't i i i'm the first to say that i don't know what any of this means but i do think we should examine who created what we believe mm. about marriage mm. monogamy mm. 
Yeah, I've always I've always thought it was my mom and dad, and at the same time, was it somebody else in the community? And you talk about it being long term. I'm at 30 years, and the one thing that we're growing into now is how to grow old together. I mean, we already did the adventuresome stuff, raising kids and having grandkids, mm-hmm. and and the growing old stuff is now slow the hell down and start listening to your body. Right, right. And how do you slow down? How do you slow down when you've been on a hamster wheel of life? I can't either. Well, I mean, and I'm like, I'm, I'm just navigating small kids. We just had our third baby. She's (laughs) three months old right now. And uh, we have a five and a three year old as well. So yeah, we're like really in the thick of it. But yeah, so much uh, marriage is different stages too. One of the best things that I learned when I reported out the book, How to Be Married, was from these very fancy French women. And everyone assumes that everyone in France is having an affair. And that's not the case. They do flirt, though. They're like, they're real good flirters. And they they say, like, I, I, you know, do have friendships with the opposite gender outside of my marriage uh, because I want to really show that I'm choosing my spouse every day, that I'm like, I'm choosing us, that I'm choosing our, our marriage, our relationship, our partnership. And I think in America, a lot of times we get very lazy because we're like, well, we're, we're definitely in this forever. So whatever, Uh, (laughs) instead of actively choosing your spouse and there's so much, out there, and I'm, I have this other podcast under the influence about social media, and there's so much that's trying to teach me how to be a good mother, mm-hmm. and there, and there's nothing about how to nurture your marriage or relationship until it gets bad. And what if it's just like normal, and you just want it to be like even better on a daily basis? Like there's just, I don't think that we talk nearly enough about nurturing our marriage, mm-hmm. and and maybe, like I, I said this, but it's so interesting. So many of the women that I interview on She Wants More say their marriage is better because they've had an affair. They look at an affair as self-care in a lot of ways. Mm-hmm. Look at Katie, though, but she had to move to a different city. I get that because I did, too, from Billings to Charlotte, and, and it was because of that junk. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. And, um, you know, so we're, we're not shying away from the consequences either on this podcast. A lot of people have seen their lives f- completely fall apart yep. because of infidelity. But Katie, yeah, she blew up her life. She had to move to another city, but now she's very happily married and they have a little girl named Skywalker, by the way, <laughs> uh, which I'm like, we cut that out of the podcast and I don't know why we cut it because I'm like, I love that detail about Katie. That is amazing. Um, so yeah, I just... I think there's a lot of aspects of infidelity that we don't talk about because we're scared. I had one friend yesterday, I was I was having lunch and I was like, oh, have you listened to my new podcast? And she's newly married and she's like, no, because like the D word, I'm like, I'm worried that if we listen to it, yep. we'll bring it on us. And I'm like, I just, I think that there's so much to learn from listening to other people's stories. I take something away every time I hear about someone's relationship, whether it's good or bad. Well, that's creating the conversation that right there, you know, when you say nurturing, my God, do you not see this as a tool for that? Because you're creating the open door. And Exactly. Exactly. I'm just trying to create a space for people to be open and honest and talk about this without judgment. And I will say I went into the podcast with judgment and I came out of it so much more open minded. Wow. Well, let's 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 open that door in the way of do you think that Internet porn has opened the door for a lot more affairs? Because to me, I mean, I don't I don't want to sound like a Christian or anything like that, but I, I do believe that's a truth. Oh, it's so interesting. I, I, you know, I don't know if that has opened the door or maybe it has closed the door. Right. Oh because maybe someone is getting what they want. From that, what I do think has opened the door to more affairs is just technology in general. Mm -hmm. And just the fact that it is, and think about if you used to have an affair before the internet. The person that you're having an affair with, you probably met them through work Mm -hmm. or through church or just in your neighborhood, like another school parent. Like there had to be in-person collisions, often work conferences. Yep. were the place that they they often happen. But don't forget, women weren't traveling to a lot of work conferences 40, 50 years ago. So again, like that's another reason things have shifted. More women are out there working, making their own money, feeling like they can have the privilege to have an affair. But now that the internet exists, you can meet someone at any time. You mm-hmm. can meet someone 
you know, while your spouse is laying in bed next to you. (laughs) And we talked to one woman who does, who did, who carried on a whole affair where they never actually hooked up. It's just on her phone and her spouse is in bed next to her and she's getting these filthy text messages. (laughs) Well, Nikki wants to know, why why do guys always, you know, call the shots? Do you think that's because of what you were just talking about 40, 50 years ago? I do. I do. Yeah. yeah I'm, I am I think that, you know, and it's funny when, when I say 40, 50 years ago, I'm like, oh, that was the 50s. And I'm like, no, that was the 80s, girlfriend. Right. You are old. <laughs> you are old. Um, <laughs> but no, I. but even then we were like, that's really when we started seeing more and more women going into the work for, workforce, owning their, owning their own livelihoods, making their own money. And that does give women the privilege to step outside of their marriage because they're less fearful of losing their financial security if their husband were to find out. Mm, mm. The guilt, the shame, the lack of trust, the uh, the cold spells. I mean, it, it's it's mind blowing what what the human emotion goes through. It is, it is, um, and we don't talk enough about those emotions, and that's one of the things that we really want to do with she wants more. Do you, how do you how do you you know because when people come in to listen to the podcast you know they're going to have questions and they you know they're going to need leadership do you offer that in any even with the advertising and pro, programmatic uh, advertising and stuff like that is there a way where they can go and find a, a peaceful answer instead of going oh god the episode is over oh now here I am I'm left alone <laughs> I mean I what I'm hoping is that people listen to this podcast with their friends and then talk about it okay. that they that they or they listen to this podcast with their spouse i mean that might seem like kind of a weird thing like hey honey after the kids are in bed do you want to listen to this podcast about cheating with me oh, but i hope but i hope that they do i really do because if you can listen to it together then you can start to talk about it together because maybe it'll give you a safe space to talk about the things you've been scared to talk about because you get to talk about other people mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah that fear you live it in your own little world of fear and when mm-hmm. you look at yourself in the mirror you're going what am i going to do what am i going to do it's always between, what am i going to do yeah it's you and that relationship in the mirror and then you take it out i always say that you know what happens in that bathroom trickles out onto the streets of the community exactly exactly Wow. Do you think women are the only ones that still wear the scarlet letter? I do. Yeah. yeah. I don't God. think that, I don't think that men are nearly nearly as stigmatized as women for having an affair and it's become like a pop culture punchline. It's like, "Oh, you just hooked up with that stripper at Bob's bachelor party." Um, but I think that women are still deeply stigmatized mm-hmm. about infidelity. What about that 7-year itch? I mean, I'm a wedding DJ and efficient. I I think there's a 1 and 2-year itch. I think there's there can there can be an itch at any time in your marriage. Yeah. There really can be. There can be an itch after you have your first kid. That is hugely life changing, and we don't talk nearly enough about that, especially for women, about how it makes us feel about our bodies and our brains being broken wide open, sometimes literally. Uh, I think that again, it all comes back to choosing your spouse on a regular basis because mm-hmm. that itch is omnipresent who came up with the seven year itch by the way like why seven i don't get it i think it's total bs i think i think whoever came up with the seven year itch is a man who wanted to have an affair after he had been married for seven years and he's like oh there's an itch now (laughs) will there be a future episode with a with a child and a parent i've always believed that my mother had a love affair and i'm a i'm a result of that because i am nowhere near like my my brothers and sisters and 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 my and now my now my mother is gone i will never know but I would like to know that I can't be the only one who feels this way. I would love to do an epi- an intergenerational episode. I, I know that my dad had a lot of affairs. I know that he cheated on my mom quite extensively. Mm-hmm. Um, I, one of my earliest memories is my mom just like throwing him out of the house for cheating cheating with a woman named Rhonda. Ooh. So the name Rhonda has like always stuck in my head as like a terrible, terrible <laughs> witch of a woman. I'm sure Rhonda was actually like a really nice lady. <laughs> Um, but it, that would be that would be really interesting, and I didn't think of that. I'm so glad that you put that planted that in my brain mm-hmm. because to to talk about that intergenerational nature of of what that does to you would be great. So Rhonda is your Jolene to Dolly Parton. Exactly. Oh my exactly. god. Exactly. Jo- <laughs> Jolene is much more lyrical. <laughs> what have you personally learned from from being this open door? Because I mean, as as a communicator, I mean, it, it's it's like you you know that you're being used as a tool. Yeah, it's it's true. It's true. But I've I've always thought that that was 
kind of my my purpose is to be the conduit through through which people can tell their stories and share their stories more openly and honestly. Do you have to sit down with editors or do you get to be in control of the editing? Because, I mean, I, it, there are certain things that happen in a podcast that I know go onto the floor and, you know, you have to go through that little moment of thought going, do I really need to get rid of it? What? Oh, I want to keep it, but... We had editors. We had a lot of producers with a lot of thoughts. Um, and there were some things that got taken out, but I think that I did end up with a really great amount of editorial control in yeah. that situation. Yeah. Yeah. Because I mean, what, what you do on podcasts anyway, this, this is long term. This is relationship in the car or sitting in an office. People tune into you because you speak the street. Where does that come from? I, I know you got the journalism background and everything like that, but there, there's got to be more to you than just that. No, it's because I'm from Philly, man. Yeah. I mean, I <laughs> right? The greatest city, the most honest city in America. I, yeah, I was a journalist in New York City for 13 years and I did all the fancy media, S-H-I-T. And I'm always on the radio. I'm like, how much can I curse? Yeah. Uh, and I know that I can't, so I'll spell it out. But <laughs> yeah, I mean, people from Philly, we are like down home. We are real. We are outside of this like normal media bubble. And I moved home. I like find when I said when I wanted to raise my kids, I moved back here. And I think also people in Philly talk to each other about everything. You yeah. can just walk down the street and people will just speak their mind to you for better or worse. And I, I really think that that's why I have become such a good conversationalist. It's because I'm from this wonderful, sometimes broken and sometimes incredibly rude city. Well, I've, I've always believed that the people of Philly, if they're not talking about it, they're singing about it. You're still going to hear about it. Truth, truth. I mean, oh my God. You should have seen us the two weeks between the NFC Championship and the Super Bowl. It was like pleasant fill here. Everyone was walking down the street. We're like, go birds, go birds. And also with you, go birds. Uh, I mean, yeah. It's a special place. Special. We got a soul. Where were you at when you decided that it had to be real women and it had to be different ages? Because, I mean, that that's a big choice and that's a big step. The first day that we created really? this podcast, and yeah, there when when this when I was first started talking to iHeart about doing this, they had suggested using actors to read women's stories. Mm. They had suggested a lot of things, and I was like, absolutely not. It's going to be a lot heavier of a reporting job. But the whole point of doing this is that we need to have real women telling their real stories. That is the power of audio, and you know that it's emotion, it's hearing hearing that, and then really connecting with a person's voice. So. Yeah, I, I refused to, I also refused to have us change anyone's voice. There were some people who dropped out and that was fine. Oh, wow. uh, because I I think that that would have distorted it too much. No. Uh, and so, yeah, it had to be real women with their real voices. And again, we didn't want anyone to feel uncomfortable. If they didn't want to do it, they didn't want to do it. But only a few people dropped out after that. People were that eager to share their real and honest stories. Wow. You got to come back to this show anytime in the future, Joe. The door is always going to be open for you. Oh, thank you so much. I love doing this. Well, you be brilliant today, okay? <laughs> Thanks, you too.